For our grammar lesson today, we are going to syntax the sentence you see in front of us. Now, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go through and pick out all the particles of negation. All the little word particles that mean no or have a negative condition of state. Let's see, there's a vowel in front of a consonant. Another vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, past tense ED. This, by the way, folks, is what is known as parse. I'm using parse to point out negative particles. This is not syntax, although some folks out there would like you to believe it is. It is not. This is parse. Any vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word means no. We're basically looking at prefixes and suffixes which have a negative condition of state, hence the descriptive term particles of negation. The SE in front of the hard consonant C secure that is a particle of negation of course the ing modifier future tense to folks in our, we have two vowels in front of a consonant. That is positive performance. Same thing here. Just so you know, that's why I did not mark that, because it is positive performance. And there you have it. All the particles of negation. Now, normally when I'm doing forensics on a document, I probably won't point out every single one of these. I will normally stick with the most obvious ones like the EDs or the prefixes like DE or PRO, things like that. Mostly stick to those just because they're easiest for most people to understand. However, I am being thorough in this particular example and uh, pointing these things out. So let's take a look. We, the people of the United States, I'm going to syntax now. I'm going to syntax this. I'm going to go forward here. I'm going to syntax this section because we have a break in the continuance of the evidence with this uh, comma here. So we can just do this one. We is what is considered to be non-tangible contract word. The is non-tangible contract word. People is tangible. Of is non-tangible. The is non-tangible. United is tangible. And states is tangible. So we have two non, one positive, two negative, two positive. So this, we, is going to be a pronoun and we know that nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb people it's tangible contract that's going to be an adjective and that's coloring of into a pronoun again nothing can follow a pronoun except for blah 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 and in this case it is an adverb adverb does modifying united into a past tense adjective and then states is being colored into a pronoun. Now we can move on to the next group. In order to perform a more perfect union. 
And by the way, folks, if if you need to know what tangibility and non-tangibility means, non-tangible contract versus tangible contract, fact-based versus non-fact-based, there are plenty of videos in my syntax playlist to give you that closure. All right? Just so you know that. So we have non-tangible contract in, tangible contract order, non-tangible contract TO, form, it's tangible contract. A is non-tangible contract. How about more? Would more be tangible contract or non-tangible contract? I know perfect is tangible and union is tangible, but how about more? What do you think, folks? That's one of those ones that fall on the line. And so that's why I've chosen that one to use as an example. And the best way to find out and certify and credential whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract is to do what? Look it up. So we have an old English Mara, which means greater, relatively greater, more, stronger, mightier. Uh, great. See Mickle. Great, large, much abundant. Okay, so these are all tangible contract concepts. So based upon that, and I'll show you a comparison with another uh, particle later, a non-tangible contract particle. This is indeed tangible contract. So now we have negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, positive, positive. Pretty easy if you ask me. In. Is non-tangible contract adverb modifying order into tangible contract verb. TO is non-tangible contract adverb into future tense modifying form into a verb. A, non-tangible contract adverb modifying more into an adjective which is coloring perfect into an adjective. And then we have union which is being colored into a tangible contract pronoun. So now our next group is establish justice. Those are two tangible contract words, so that's going to be adjective pronoun. Sure, domestic tranquility. Those are three tangible contract words. So that's going to be adjective, adjective pronoun. Now here's one I'm going to look up. I-N. Why is I-N a particle of negation? Now, okay, sure is tangible contract. In is a modifier. It's a non-tangible contract modifier. But it does not change the tangibility or non-tangibility of the word simply because there is only one suffix that does that. And we know that authority comes at the end. So ly is the only suffix that can actually change a word from tangible to non-tangible contract. And I've done lots of videos on that as well. You can look that up. Just look up hyphen ly in uh, my YouTube channel and you'll find it. But for our intents and purposes here, I'm going to look up the word in and I'm going to show you why it is a particle of negation. Not. Opposite of. Without. Proto-Indo-European. Not. So there you go. Particle of negation. That's why I marked it as such. All right. Next group, provide for the common defense. Tangible contract provide, non-tangible for, non-tangible the, tangible common defense, tangible. So we have provide, which is an adjective, which is coloring for into a pronoun, the, is an adverb because why nothing can follow a pronoun except for an uncommon defense adjective pronoun promote is a pronoun the 
is an adverb modifying general to an adjective, welfare, pronoun. Now we have a comma and then the word and. Folks, normally and would be considered to be what? A conjunction, right? But as you see here, there's a comma. So when there's a comma, that's a break in the continuance of the evidence for all intents and purposes. There is nothing before the word and. So therefore, and is not performing the function of a conjunction. It's something else. And when you just look at it by itself as three letters A and D, it is considered to be non-tangible contract. And so it's going to be an adverb. And it's modifying secure into a verb. The is an adverb modifying blessings into a verb. Of is an adverb modifying liberty into a verb. To is an adverb in the future tense modifying ourselves into a verb. Now we have the word and functioning as a conjunction because it's connecting these two syntax scenarios. The one, two, and the one, two. Because as you know, or maybe you don't know, conjunctions, when used in syntax scenarios such as this, serve as bridges. They can serve as bridges between adverbs, verbs, adjectives, pronouns, or any of the five syntax scenarios. What are the five syntax scenarios? We have one, two, we have four, one, two, we have three, four, we have one, three, four, and we have four, one, three, four. Those are the five syntax scenarios, and these are the two that this con particular conjunction is connecting. One, two, and one, two. Now we have do ordain and establish. This constitution for the United States of America. So DO is tangible contract. It is, all right, coloring ordain into tangible contract pronoun. Now we have another conjunction and, which is zero. And then establish, which is tangible contract pronoun. So this DO, tangible contract adjective, is coloring both ordain and establish. Because and, as a neutral condition of state, does not modify anything nor is modified by anything. It's just carrying the modification across the bridge here to establish. And we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. Modifying constitution into an adjective, which is coloring for into a pronoun. The is adverb modifying united into past tense adjective. And then states is being modified and colored into a pronoun of non-tangible contract adverb. And in America is a tangible contract dangling participle verb. Because folks, what is a verb? A verb is thinking, it's motion. And as you can plainly see here, America comes at the end of the sentence. There's nothing left to think about. So it's just dangling there. And yes, I will do the hand gesture. It's dangling there at the end. So there you go. There's your syntax. Now, I'm not sure why my Word program spaced this out this way. I didn't mean for it to do that. That's the way it should look, minus the capitalization after each breaking the continuance of the evidence. But actually, it is picking up on that. The fact that it automatically capitalized the word after a break in the continuance of the evidence tells you that maybe AI is learning, slowly but surely, how to do correct grammar. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, or criticisms, go ahead and leave them in the comments field.
Thank <laughs> you.